So I have a question about the second talk. So thank you for uh, the very interesting uh, presentation. And at the very end, you mentioned uh, bulk edge correspondence. And this actually mm -hmm. leads me to a question about what happens on the edge. So you mentioned that you predict fractionalization of Laughlin quasi-particles, and this connects with the Gaffnian uh, space. So naively, at least, I would think that then you should have Gaffnian conformal field theory as a universal description of the edge. But the theory is non-unitary, and yes, so it seems so. problematic. So what actually happens on the edge? So what? Uh, so the argument for the uh, uh, Gaffnian phase is really only applying to the uh, 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 Hamiltonian when it's a pure Gaffnian model Hamiltonian, where you will have uh, low line excitations that are purely uh, satisfying conformal symmetry. But what you're doing here is really to look at a uh, Hamiltonian that consists of uh, also two-body interactions. The key thing here is that V1 is needed because you still want the charge gap to be open. So once you add these Hamiltonians, uh, these uh, components, then you're breaking the conformal symmetry of the uh, null space of, uh, of the low-line excitations you are dealing with. So the original arguments uh, about the Gaffney or Hafnian doesn't do not really apply here, I believe. Uh, either way, I'm not trying to say that we're going to get uh, some kind of Gaffnian phase or the Hafnian phase is still a Laughlin phase but uh, the dynamics of the quadri holes can be quite interesting. Uh, so you are telling, so yeah. do I understand correctly then that you are telling that the edge theory is still the regular Laughlin edge theory and nevertheless quasi-particles do not have charge one sort, they have charge one fix. Well, uh, for the for the edge of this particular, uh, for example, second Landau level Coulomb interactions, uh, I would say it depends on the energy scales because if you are moving away from V1, you really don't know uh, the uh, um, if those quadri holes or the edge excitations are still conformally invariant. I think there are maybe some assumptions in that, uh, assuming the the gap is much larger than the dispersion or the bandwidth of the quadri holes, then maybe that will still apply. But I would say if you calculate, for example, the heat capacity of the, uh, of the one-dimensional edge, I don't think it will, uh, uh, na naively speaking, there's no reason to believe uh, the, uh, 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 it will give you exactly the same answer uh, as the lowest Landau level Coulomb interactions, especially near the pneumatic phase, because the quadri holes degeneracy is lifted. So, 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 uh, so, but, but I, I'm trying to make sense of the edge theory. So, okay, mm -hmm. so are you telling that edge theory is definitely not conformal field theory? Mm -hmm. So, that's right. your statement that something is very badly broken. Uh, right. But uh, so, if we just look at the gapless excitation, so are you telling that it's very essential that some of them have different velocities and that would completely break conformal invariance? Normally, mm -hmm. that's seen as an innocent complication. They just make core velocities yeah. the same, and that's it. Yeah, I would say that's my suspicion. I think you have excitations with different velocities, and they can interact with each other. For the uh, edge, uh, maybe it's more relevant to look at another paper, I think by Ajit and uh, uh, Maisam. They discuss about the edge of the laughing also in a, in a rather different way, predicting a type of uh, gapped excitations uh, uh, at the edge. Carrying mm -hmm. a charge of one six, I think that's oh. actually more relevant. Yeah. So, so, so maybe you mean that sort of breakdown of bulk edge correspondence right. yes, yes. that some that one six is gapped out on the edge, so the edge cannot know that you uh, anything that the bulk is not regular uh, uh, laughing state. So, most maybe probably. A, yeah. So, okay, okay, this mm -hmm. scenario is uh, okay. Thank you. Mm, no problem. Mm. Okay, uh, Jane Andrew. Yeah, I had I had a question for uh, Bernd. Uh, so, uh, I mean, you calculated how, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, so you, you showed how cross correlations in the current have information about the exclusion factor, one minus P, which comes from uh, anion statistics. Uh, do the interactions between anions also affect the exclusion factor or the yes, cross current I think they, could affect uh, this exclusion factor. So, so uh, if you remember, I had these parameters, um, the exponent delta and the effective charge um, lambda, and um, they could be interaction dependent. So say if you had screening due to edge reconstruction, results could be different. Or if you included, uh, say, the Coulomb interaction between particles, yes. So can one estimate how much uh, Coulomb interactions would influence the results? 
yes i think so i mean what, what, what's the standard thing so if you include so um So it would be Coulomb interaction between upper and lower edge, right? Which, which would that's right matter. Right. And well, we 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 haven't done it. Okay. Uh, so so the the idea would be that um, there is a universal limit, which would be a limit of low voltages, low temperature, and large distances, and uh, that in this limit, um, any finite range interaction would not influence the cost correlations. And if one moves away from this universal limit, then all these non-universal properties, which ultimately would include the shape of the QPC and so on and so forth, uh, could enter. But, but we have not uh, tried to analyze this beyond um, allowing for these parameters. OK, thank you. Welcome. Can I ask also okay. a question, Voti Heiblum? Sure. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Continue, Jinango, I think, because the, the cross correlation is really when particles not miss each other, but when they hit each other. And it's extremely surprising when you have two charged particles hit each other at a small environment of the QPC, it is not very dominant in the statistics of the cross correlation that you measure. Very surprising. Well, my, my argument would be that <clears throat> it's the low energy dynamics, which is universal and given by these edge correlation functions. So you, you can compute a length scale from, from your voltage using the um, edge velocity. And if this length scale is much longer than the size of the QPC, then it should not matter. And if you are working uh, at, at high voltages, which would be able to resolve the shape of the QPC, then it should matter. Well, it seems to be that some some estimate on on the voltage or on the size of the of the wave packet should mm -hmm. come in because even if the wave packet is very large, then the chance they will see each other is bigger, is larger. No, but that's included in the calculation. That, so so this calculation is is correct in the limit of very large wave packets. No, no, I'm talking about Coulomb that is not included. Yeah, but but uh, so uh, I mean that there, there, there are some gates involved, like for defining the QPC. So there will be some screening, and if Coulomb is not long range, but if it's finite range, then it would drop out in this uh, low energy limit as well. So I agree. There may be. Corrections, the only thing which I can say to defend the calculation that there is at least one limit of low energies uh, where it's um, where it should be correct. Okay, thank you. Um, Steve. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, very, very nice talks, both of them. Uh, this question is to, to Bo. Um, I just want to make sure I understood something. The one six particles, uh, you say that they they unbind, but they only unbind to in your picture they only unbind to a finite distance. Is that right. the and and well, what what sets that distance? Are you able to measure it? So if the neutral excitations are completely soft, for example, that's if that's what we're assuming for the pneumatic fraction quantum wall phase, then uh, the two uh, Gaffney quasi or Laughlin quasi goals can fresh, uh, can can be completely deconfined. So they can be as far away from each other as possible because the neutral excitations do not cost any energy. But let's say if we are just near the pneumatic fraction quantum wall phase, so the energy controlling the distance between the two Laughlin quadri uh, the, the fractionalized quadriholes is the neutral gap in the long wavelength limit, which is a gap, uh, the quadruple gap, basically. If the quadruple gap is large, then they have to be very strongly bonded. But if the quadruple gap is small, they can be further away from each other. Does okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah, sure. Thanks. Thanks. Bert? Yeah, so this is just to return to uh, Dima's question to, 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 to uh, Bo Yang. Uh, if we're in this uh, an appropriate regime where the energy gap for the one six particles, let's say, is relatively small, at the, I'm not talking about the edge state, mm -hmm. would you find the crossover as a function of temperature so that at, at low temperatures, you would see just one mode and it would look like Laughlin, but then yeah. there'd be some critical temperature and above that, but still well yes. below the gap, you would see the behavior 
uh, at the edge, which would be uh, which would replicate what you would get from the uh, fr from this Hafnian state. Yes, yes, exactly. So we actually calculated uh, this uh, critical temperature here. So this That's is like bulk. Yeah, this Sorry. is the edge or the bulk, or is it the same? In the bulk. This is in the bulk. Yeah. So the what edge, about the uh, edge? At the edge, we, uh, I think it depends on uh, probably on. So I don't, I don't want to. I don't want. Sorry, I don't want to be high temperature. I just want to be high energy. I want to be. I want the bulk to be at, at low temp, at zero temperature, so that we're mm -hmm. okay. But then I'm going to inject quasi particles, uh, or mm -hmm. I have voltages at the edge which are larger than this Tc over Kb or whatever. To, right. Yes. To, to then I would get a, a, a uh, so I could still be at zero temperature, but but ask what happens as I go into to higher energies at the edge. Of course, at, at high enough energy, maybe the the, the states would decay into the edge. I don't. I'm, or, or, I'm, if if you go if the energy is too high, then maybe the the the, the edge edge states uh, start charge at the edge moves into the bulk or something. Yes. But, yes, yes. But, yeah, but so if you if you ignore all the non universal aspects of the edge confining potential, then if you're inserting a, a quasi hole at the high energy, then it will fractionalize. Okay. With this interaction. It will fractionize into two quasi holes, uh, each carrying a charge of one six, exactly mimicking almost like a half moon phase. But uh, it uh, you have to do it at high energy, and as Good. you said, the energy has to be smaller than the the, the, ch the charge gap. Otherwise, everything uh, is off the table. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, no problem. Okay. Are there any other questions to the speakers? Some? Yeah. Uh, can I ask uh, Bo about the um, oh. BKT phase transition? So right. is it um, BKT required the potential between two objects to be logarithmic? Uh, and here you don't have that. So is it really yeah. a BKT? Well, uh, so I, I don't think we can calculate exactly the, the how, how the energy uh, depends on the distance between them, because it really depends on the form of interaction. But I can make the uh, energy dependence on the distance to be as small as possible, as long as the neutral gap is small. So uh, within certain regime, I would say uh, it's always possible to have a finite density of uh, fractionalized uh, uh, laughing quasi codes, uh, just from the thermal distribution point of view. Uh, they may not be able to deconfine com completely, because uh, maybe uh, the scaling of the energy is not logarithm, it's made probably linear, but uh, they can be further uh, far away enough uh, from each other. Uh, and the distance between them can be large enough and they are potentially uh, can be seen in the experiment. Yeah, maybe my question is that, mm -hmm. um, are we sure that there is a phase transition or it can be a crossover? It's probably a crossover. What I'm just calculating here is a critical temperature at which you have a finite density of uh, as the fractionalized uh, law of inequality. So I always call it the KT-like transition. I'm not exactly sure yet. It's, you have to do numerics to see the dependence of the interaction. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. Um, Janandra, you have another question? Yeah, this is a question for both. So, uh, I mean, you are uh, aware, maybe you mentioned it in your talk uh, that there is a part on description of uh, one third where also you can get uh, excitations which are, uh, which are charged is a fraction mm -hmm. of Laughlin quasi particle charge. Yes, uh, yes. Is there, a, is there a connection between what you're doing and the other uh, part on description? At least I discussed with Ajit extensively about this. Uh, I think uh, they are focusing more on the edge, I guess, uh, with a different approach from pattern constructions. But in terms of physics, what they are predicting is basically under certain conditions, you can have one six charge at the edge, which is very similar to the fractionalization of law and quality holes. So I believe in certain aspects, uh, we are really describing the same picture. Uh, I think uh, one thing that I'm connecting here is uh, this fractionalization to the pneumatic fraction quantum hole phase from this conformal Hilbert space description. So uh, since um, the underlying assumptions of the two approaches are uh, in some sense quite different, so it's not hard to, it's not easy to pinpoint exactly okay. what we are agreeing on, but we can predict very similar things uh, in terms of experiments. Okay. 
Thanks. Okay, if there are no other questions, um, we can move on. Thank you both speakers for really good talks um, and the app take over.